Welcome back, everybody, to our lessons about bonding. We will continue talking about the basics and the Lewis structures that go with them. Just as a reminder, um, valence electrons are an important part of bonding. Uh, they are the ones that interact uh, on your periodic table for my students. Uh, on our periodic table, we already numbered them. Uh, one, two, skip a few, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. All right, we talked about how helium only has two. It's an exception to the rule, all right? And so we're going to be using this extensively today. So you might want to have your periodic table ready. So when we go over Lewis structures for covalent compounds, all of this makes sense. And so let's talk about covalent bonds. And just like this meme says, yeah, covalent bonds, sharing is caring. You see, covalent bonds are a physical bond held together by the sharing of electrons. The other lesson, we talked about how ionic bonds were a transferring of electrons. One element giving up its electrons to the other to make a bond. Well, in this case, they're sharing. They want to make a full outer shell, but to do that, they're going to share them. All right, now, covalent bonding is just for non-metals, all right? There is no metals attached to this, all right? Covalent bonding, those non-metals are like, form their own little country club, and they're not letting any metals in. You can't join us, all right? Covalent bonding, just non-metals. So we're going to be focusing on the right-hand side of the periodic table. So some characteristics of covalent bonding is they are generally weaker than ionic, because there is a sharing going on there, and it is a weaker bond, all right? And they're going to share enough until they have that full outer shell or meet the octet rule, which is eight valence electrons for most of them. We know hydrogen and helium are the exception with two. Helium's not taking place in any bonding right now, so we don't have to worry about that. And with covalent bonding, we could have single, double, and triple bonds. Now, if you really want to think about it, single bonds, all right, that is just one physical and chemical link between elements, double and triple. Do you think those would increase in strength? Oh, yeah, of course. If you were, you know, like holding on to something really important, you know, with both hands instead of two, you know that you're going to have a better grip on it. Same thing if you have three uh, bonds. And also, sometimes that sharing is not fair. All right, one atom is going, hmm, you know what? I really, really, really want these electrons, so I'm going to pull them closer to me. And then the other atom is going, you know what? I, I, I want these electrons, but I don't want them that much, so I'm okay with you taking some of the electrons. And that's why we have right here a slightly negative sign, or a dipole moment, and then we have a slightly positive over here all right this is polarity and the polarity is why it gives us a lot of unique things especially with like water all right so now let's talk about drawing covalent compounds because this is the the focus of today's lesson all right now some people find drawing covalent uh, Lewis structures to be pretty difficult and so if you were in my class, I gave you the little sheet, and this is the sheet right here, the little uh, steps that I use for it. This is the Ruggle method, all right? Sure, it gives us a little bit of math involved, but it's going to point you to the correct structure. A lot of the times, you can figure out these structures by just looking at it, understanding where bonds are going to be formed and where lone pairs are going to be. All right, that takes some trial and error, or you can follow these rules and it will point you to that direction. So the first step that we can see right here is how many valence electrons does the compound want to be happy? All right, so we already know that every single element wants to meet the octet rule, all right? We know that that means that it's eight for every atom all right, and then hydrogen and helium, of course, only want two. All right, so we're going to look at the compound before we draw the Lewis structure, and we're going to just add up. Okay, well, this one wants eight, this one wants eight, so that's going to equal 16. 
And we'll look at the example down below. All right, then the next step says, well, how many valence electrons does it actually have? So we look at the compound and we go, okay, well, hydrogen only has one valence electron. Carbon has four, nitrogen has five. So, you know, add these up, it gets 10. Okay. Then the next step, all right, says, well, then how many are you missing? How many are we missing from one and two, step one and step two? So all you gotta do is take step one minus step two and you get a number. And then the last step says, how many bonds are needed? So if it takes two electrons to make a bond, if there's going to be a back and forth sharing of electrons, all right, then what we need to do is look at our missing number and divide that by two and it tells us how many bonds we need to draw. In this case, it's how many lines we need to draw because a line represents basically two electrons when we do Lewis structures. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice a couple and I'm gonna go through these steps and show you that this is going to point you to a correct drawing of the Lewis structure. Okay, so let's go. That's not enough because what we need to do all right, and look and see what we and to start off. So I got the rules down here at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and look at this. This is chlorine. All right, it's a diatomic chlorine. Okay, so let's go look at our steps. Step one says, how many valence electrons does the chlorine want to be happy? Well, how many does it really want? So we got chlorine and a chlorine. All right, this chlorine, he wants eight, and this chlorine wants eight, so I get a total of 16. All right, step two. How many valence electrons does the compound actually have? So we're going to add up the, the valence electrons. Well, we know that chlorine has seven, and this chlorine has seven, so that makes a total of 14 electrons, valence electrons. Step three is, how many are missing? Well, if I take 16 minus 14, I get two electrons are missing. That's two electrons are what? Separating this bond from, excuse me, these elements from being happy. Okay, so we know we make bonds. All right. And one line is representing two electrons. So two divided by two equals one bond for number four. So I need to draw one line. So with two elements, two chlorines, no one's gonna be in the middle, all right? They're just gonna be right here next to each other. And I'm gonna draw one bond, AKA one line in between it. Now, uh, we need to do to make everything happy. All right, so right now, are they showing a full outer shell. Okay, so if we look at this chlorine right here, all right, the only thing touching him is this. Okay, well, guess what? That is only two electrons. So he does not have a full outer shell represented. So what we need to do is go through and add the rest of the electrons that gives them a full outer shell. Okay, same thing with the other chlorine. Right now, he only has two valence electrons, right? So we need to go back and add some electrons to make him have a full outer shell. And what I have is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. That's a wrong pin. The We got 14 electrons being shown in our diagram. And what do you know? 14 is what we came up with, with how many valence electrons were it actually had. So this would be a correct Lewis structure for this compound. Let's go ahead and try another one. All right, water. 
Let's see if we could work this one out. We could come up to Lewis structure for it. Okay, some of us probably already have seen the structure of water, so you might know this one. But let's just go through the steps, all right, and see if we could get a correct diagram. So step number one says, how many does each want to be, you know, do they want to be happy? How much do they really need to be happy? Okay, well, hydrogen needs two, hydrogen needs two, and oxygen needs eight. Remember that hydrogen and helium, they're happy with two. Right, because they're on that first energy level. Everything else wants 8 to meet the octet rule. Okay, So 2 plus 2 plus 8 make 12. Okay. Step 2. Well, how many do they actually have? Okay, well now we look. You look at your periodic table. We already wrote the valence electrons on. We know that hydrogen needs 1. Hydrogen needs one, oh, well, has one, excuse me, and then oxygen has six. So that makes a total of eight. I don't know. They don't match up. Well, that's good because that's why we make bonds. So 12 minus eight is four electrons. All right, that's what's missing. And how do we take care of these missing ones? Well, they make bonds to share them so everybody can have a full outer shell. All right, each bond is going to be represented by two, so four divided by two means I am going to draw two bonds, a.k.a. two lines. Now, we have three different elements in here. That means somebody is going to try to take the middle place. All right, somebody wants to be in the middle. That happens a lot with bonds. Well, in this case, we already know that hydrogen does not need that many electrons to be happy. All right, so oxygen is going to step forward and say, I want to be in the middle. So we could just go ahead and put him in the middle. All right, we're just learning the basic uh, Lewis structure right now. Okay, and we need to draw two bonds, two lines. All right, so let's just connect it to the middle one. Okay, now we go back and we check to see if everybody's happy. And if they're not, we add on of valence electrons until they get to either two or eight, depending on the element. So right now, I'm looking at just the hydrogen, all right? This hydrogen, well, he has two right there. So he is happy, okay? This hydrogen, it has two being shared right there. So it's happy. What about our oxygen? Well, he has two four. Uh-oh. This oxygen is not currently happy. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go through and add valence electrons. So now it's five, six, seven, eight. It now has eight. So it is happy. It's meeting the octet rule. Now, for just learning how to do lowest structures, this, I say that's, that's well enough. All right. That is, that's good. All right, when we talk about Vesper theory, all right, and that's, that would be coming up soon, all right, then we're going to find out that it's actually shaped like this. All right, but like I said, this is just an introduction to the structures for covalent, so we're not going to really focus too much on that at this time. All right, let's go ahead with, uh-oh, a bigger one, a more difficult example. All right, if you could do this one, if you understand it, you're good to go. You got this. Let's go through our steps really quickly. And there's, you'll get to a point that when you do these, you don't even need to do the steps. You just look at it and you know, okay, this is what it's going to be. So step one, how many valence electrons does the compound want in order to be happy? So we got a carbon, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and an oxygen. Okay. Well, carbon wants eight. We know that hydrogens want two each, and then an oxygen we already talked about wants eight to be happy to meet the octet rule. So we add these together, we get 20. All right, step two. How many valence electrons do they actually have? All right, carbon has four. That's what makes uh, carbon a really good um, volunteer for the middle because it has four valence electrons, that means it has a lot of places to make bonds. 
So carbon will always volunteer to be in the middle. All right, hydrogen, one each. And then oxygen, we already counted, is six. So when we add these up, we got 12. Okay, step three. How many am I missing? 20 is what I would like to have. Minus the 12 that I have, so I ha am missing 8 electrons. In order to get those 8 electrons, I'm going to take 8 divided by 2. So I'll get 4 bonds. 4 bonds, which means I need to draw 4 lines. Alright, now so look, setting up this structure before we start drawing the lines might be a little bit difficult. But remember what we said. Alright, carbon is a good candidate to be in the middle. All right, he has a lot of room to make bonds. So when we put carbon in the middle, that means everything else is going to want to surround it. All right, so let's just go ahead and say, okay, I got a hydrogen right here. I got a hydrogen right... Oh, my pin's going everywhere. I got a hydrogen right there, and then I got an oxygen right here. All right, so that's that's good enough for right now. When we're just learning how to draw it. Remember, we're not worried about Vesper theory at this point. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our four bonds. Four bonds means four lines. Okay, well, just connecting everything up, that's three. All right, so we need another, another line somewhere, another bond. Well, we know that this other, this other line, you, know, you can't bond anything to, you know, thin air to nothing has to be to another element it can't be to the hydrogens because they're already happy with one single bond so it has to go to this oxygen right here okay so we got our four lines let's just go through and check to see if everybody's happy all right so this hydrogen it has its two it's happy this hydrogen, it has its two. It is happy. This carbon, all right, it's got two, four, six, eight. It meets the octet rule. So let's look at the oxygen. Two, four. No, it is not happy. So that means we need to add, all right, some pairs of electrons. So it has four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, now let's just double check. Let's double check to see if this is correct. If we are right, then we should have 12 electrons being represented. So let's go. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Uh oh, what do you know? We were correct. All right, we were correct. So good job. Now, like I said, well, you worry about Vesper theory and what the actual shape is later on. But this is our basic Lewis structure for a covalent compound. All right, so practice at this, follow those steps, and it will guide you to a correct answer. All right, the more you do it, the better you'll just be able to see patterns and just automatically put the elements where they belong. But good luck.